Hello, I'm firefighter Margaret Stewart with the Los Angeles City Fire Department. And if you haven't heard, our application period is opening soon. So today we're here with Battalion Chief Christine Larson and Captain Kimberly Rudloff from the firefighter recruitment section to come and bring to you all of the information you need to know to successfully navigate, hopefully, the, in, the selection process and get the dream job with LA City Fire. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. And so we know there's a lot of questions that we get consistently. So the goal here today is to really cover all the basics so we can give everybody exactly what they need, know where to go to get all the information they may forget that we told them <laughs> and how to research it for themselves. So let's start right off. When is this application period opening? The application period opens on February 2nd and it will close on June 15th. So you can apply between those two times. You get a little bit extra time to complete the written exam. You have till July 15th to complete that. Okay, and so let's, let's uh, clarify for anyone who thinks they have to be right there on the button on February 2nd at 0800 or whatever time it opens, does it matter when you apply during that process? All the applications are weighted equally. So as soon as you apply and you're verified with all the per pertinent information, you're good to go because they're not going to draw names until they have the group of people that are, are in that cohort, so to speak. Um, so June 15th. Okay. So no, no rush. You have time. But there's a lot you need to do to make sure you're prepared for the entire hiring process if you are successful. So I always encourage start early, but you've got plenty of time to actually make your application, right? Yes. yes. All right. So Captain Rudloff, why don't we have, um, why don't we bring you the question of how, where and how do I apply? That's a great question. So as soon as we open hiring on February 2nd, you will go to governmentjobs.com. There you will be able to fill out the actual firefighter application. Uh, from then, there's one more step. You have to take the FCA written exam. That's a firefighter candidate assessment. And that's offered through a third party provider called PSI. There is a fee for that test. It's $73. Uh, but keep in mind, if you can't afford the $73, we do offer a waiver. You just need to allow more time for all of those things to you know, be in place. So governmentjobs.com, firefighter application, city of Los Angeles, FCA. The important thing to remember about the FCA, they have to schedule, register, and take it. So they actually have to you take have to it. actually take you it. You have to take it. <laughs> and you have to pass with a 70 or better. Okay. So just to clarify for everyone, don't call a fire station. Don't walk up with a piece of paper. You're not going to apply at joinlefd.org, but you'll find the link Correct. on where to apply. Don't call the firefighter recruitment section go to the website and it's all explained for you right there. Yep. Okay, so let's talk about the basic, the very basic qualifications that are required to apply. So minimum age at time of application is 18 years of age. Uh, there's no max, so you, you, know, you can be older, that's fine. You have to have a high school diploma, GED or equivalent. A foreign diploma is accepted, but you have to get that certified. There is an authorization process you have to go through. Um, and then you have to fill out the application and pass the FCA written exam. Those are the three big um, qualifications. Okay. And let's, let's talk specifically to the FCA because, you know, there have people that have taken it in the couple years past, like in 2016, 2018. They took the test, but there, there was no hiring done during that period. So are those tests still valid? Do they have to retake it? What's the situation there? So yeah, if you've taken the test in 2016, 18, or 2020 and passed, again, with a seven year better, you do not have to take it again. You only have to go online and fill out that application. Okay, so you still have to apply, but correct. you don't have to retake the test as long as you successfully pass that it. That is correct. Prior to 2016, doesn't matter. Right. Okay. Now, EMT, we get a lot of questions. Do I need it? When do I need it? What is the lowdown on EMT certification? So they will need their EMT uh, by the time they get to that PIQ, that preliminary investigative questionnaire, which happens after the interview. The important thing to remember about EMT is they either have to have their California state EMT or the national registry EMT. So if they're out of state and they already have an out of state EMT license, they're gonna have to, that will be okay, as long as it's a national registry license. 
So if they are in Georgia and they did something that's state only, they will, that doesn't apply. They have to take the national registry test to have the national certification. Correct. Or they can go to California uh, EMSA uh, agency and petition for a California state EMT license. Gotcha. Kind of like how lawyers and doctors can get reciprocity. Yeah, cross, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. great. Um, Let's talk about medically. What, what is the process for medical qualification and what's required? They're going to do an in-depth physical for the medical. Um, usually the things that uh, make have issues for people are if they've had like recent injuries. So you have an orthopedic injury. You were skateboarding and you broke a wrist. All they're going to ask for is documentation that you know, you went to a hospital, maybe you had to have surgery, pins or rods. They just want to know that it healed correctly bring copies of your x-rays and your doctor's reports, and, and that's generally will satisfy them. Medical cases are taken on a case-by-case -case basis, so I can't tell you one thing or another is gonna disqualify you. Everybody is, is, is looked at as an individual in that situation. So our, our easiest answer when we get these individualized medical questions are apply, get apply, to that point, absolutely. and they'll deal with it on a case-by-case -case basis. Make them tell you no. Make them tell you no is what we sell them. You know, have all the documentation that you need if you've had that orthopedic injury or something, some surgery for something. Um, have that stuff with you. And if it was a long time ago, it might not even be relevant to what they're doing. So right. it's a case-by-case -case basis. And pers uh, the medical services division that, that does the, the medicals are going to give it a thorough and fresh examination. Right. And regarding qual uh, requirements, the COVID vaccine is required by the time you reach what point? It's required by the time you get to the interview. You either have to have proof of vaccination or proof of exemption. So aside from the medical requirements, there are also physical requirements because obviously this is a strenuous job and you have to be able to prove that you're physically capable. So the candidate physical ability test, talk about what that is and when is that needed? So the candidate physical abilities test is due at the same time that you do your preliminary baseline and your background fitness, uh, baseline fitness test and your preliminary background investigation. We'll ask for your EMT license and that CPAT certification. Uh, the CPAT test costs $150 and you do that again through an outside vendor. Uh, there's uh, about four areas around the California that you can do it. So uh, if you are not in California, you can go to International Association of Firefighters and take the FCTC online. You can look for that exam and take it. If you take it in New York, it's good for Los Angeles. For the purposes of our department, uh, that certification is good for one year and it needs to be valid throughout the whole hiring process. So you may have to take it a second time just to make sure it's valid as you go all the way through the process. Right. Uh, the exam is 10 minutes and 20 seconds. It's a bunch of different exercises that test the things that we do on a, on a somewhat normal basis in firefighting. The only difference is you do it with a 50 pound weighted vest the whole time and you add 25 pounds to your shoulders for the first three minutes and 20 seconds while you're on the step mill. The rest of it will take that weight off and let you run through the obstacle course. Drag hose, lift tools, pull a halyard, raise a ladder, do a forcible entry prop, do a search and rescue, pull a heavy dummy, um, and then do what we call a ceiling breach and pull. So it's, it's all on you, it's not a hard test. Again, we have videos for that online on our joinlafd.org website. Um, we do offer free practice for that exam on Wednesday nights at our Frank Hodgkins Training Center if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. Just go to Eventbrite, look for LAFD uh, CPAT and register and we'll run you through the course. We won't give you the certification, but at least you'll be able to try it. Know if you can pass it before you have to spend $150. And, and can't recommend enough to people to put the effort in to practice it because a lot of people, oh, I'm super strong, I'm fit, but there's technique and there's knowing how to take the test. And so putting a little effort in and giving them run, getting familiar with it can really make a big difference. Well, we know from the data that the more you've had the chance to practice this test, the better off and more successful you'll be. Right. So if you have no idea what it is, come and try it. That way you know whether you're ready or what you physically need to do. We'll tell you what you physically need to do to get ready to pass that exam. Right. One of the questions we often get is, am I allowed to have tattoos? Can you just briefly cover what the tattoo policy is for recruits? So you will have to um, outline all of your visible tattoos. You'll have to describe them, what the meaning behind them is. And then all tattoos must be covered. So whether you decide to wear a long sleeve uh, shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, 
uh, an arm sleeve, anything that is visible must be covered. For all of our um, applicants that are in the military that are considering firefighting as their, as their follow on career, we get a lot of questions. If I'm still in, can I apply? What do you say to that? So our hiring lists run for two years. So it really is based on the timing that you're gonna exit the military. You can always apply, go through the process, as long as you're able to get to an interview or a background investigation um, by getting time off, you're eligible to apply. And we encourage people to apply. Um, you know, we, we love our military people. We have a lot of mili prior military people on the department and, and we welcome them. Great. Uh, in terms of background, we talked a little bit about a, the background investigation that's a part of the hiring process. If someone has been arrested previously, does that disqualify them? What in the background is a disqualifier? Well, the only absolute disqualifier for us is a felony. And because you have to have your EMT, and part of the condition of being an EMT is that you have to pass a has prints, uh, has, uh, fingerprint check. Uh, if you can't, you can't pass that with a felony. So uh, EMT is a condition of employment, so that's, that's what will do that. The background covers a whole lot of different things. I don't know that there's one specific thing other than a felony that's a disqualifier. And again, each person is based on their own merits and, and their own background. So there's not one specific standard. They, there's, there's a standard for everything, but each person is taken individually. Right, okay. And we did briefly talk about age limit. I just want to reemphasize because we get that a lot. There is no upper age limit. Correct. So if you are physically fit enough and you're committed and dedicated, go for it. Yeah? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. Right. Now, do you know um, approximately an estimate of what the, how many classes the department's going to run, how many drill towers, how many hiring? Give people a, a concept of what they're up against. So what the fire chief has said is that we have the authority to hire 300 and that'll be based on however many classes we can get through. And if the city council wants to throw some more money our way, <laughs> we'll hire as many as we can. Um, but it, it's important to remember we have consistently been hiring since 2013. We haven't really stopped hiring at all. We did not hire between 2008 and 2013, but since we started back up, we have been throwing classes through right and left. So. Um, it's a great time to be trying to get hired because there are going to be a lot of spots open. A new class starts with 65 new recruits. All right. And is there a residency requirement currently? No, there's no longer a residency requirement. Okay. So one of the questions we often get, especially via our social media or for people living abroad that want to come here to apply, what's the case with a foreign citizen? So we don't sponsor work visas. So anybody that's gonna join the fire department has to have the legal right to work in the United States. Uh, so however they are in the process, if they're in the process, if they started the process, they can kind of roll the dice and see if they get their citizenship before they apply. But that's the one thing that would hold them back if they applied and were given a job offer but did not have the legal right to work. So just to clarify, it, to, to initiate the application, they don't have to have that no. yet. But to accept a job offer, they have to have the legal right to work in the U.S. by the time they accept a job offer. That is correct. Yes. All right. Now, we've covered pretty much the, the basic requirements, the process. I'll emphasize again to everyone that all of this information, the decision tree we talked about in terms of what's the, what the steps are, all of that is available right there at joinlefd.org. That's a really important resource. And we've kind of joked about it, but the reality is if you can't go there and research these answers, then you're probably going to have a problem in this profession because it takes that initiative. So we really want to encourage people, dig in, know that website, know that information. If there's still something you don't know, you know, then, then you can reach out. But the information is there. Yeah, a great page on that joinlafd.org website is the FAQ section. Uh, pretty much will answer any question that anyone has. It's, we've worked really hard to make the website um, all-inclusive to answer everyone's questions and make the information as easy to find as we could. Right. I think the one other thing I'll, I'll highlight is, you know, there, we gave you the basic requirements, but there are other requirements like having a driver's license, um, having a passing the vision requirement, hearing requirements. There's other things, and, and I the the vision requirement is one that catches a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't think they look at it. Um, and so, you know, if you wear glasses or contacts, 
I say go to your optometrist, see what your, you know, your vision is, compare it to what is required. And if you have LASIK surgery, not an issue. Have LASIKs done, you come, you come on the job. Yeah. Not an issue at all. But there's other requirements that you have to have. And, you know, we take it for granted because we live in California that everybody has a driver's license, but there's people back east that don't drive. So right. if they don't have a driver's license, that's something that an obstacle they'll have to overcome. Right. Good point. All right. So let's talk a little bit of the, they've already got, they've already applied. So we got the application information set. They know how to do that. How do they just best prepare? How do you, um, how do you instruct people to help best prepare themselves for the process, for the interview? What do they do? So uh, there's a couple programs that come to mind that I'd like to recommend. First, you know, uh, being a firefighter is a very physically demanding job. So the number one thing we stress is you need to be in the best shape of your life. One of the programs we offer to help individuals obtain that goal is CAPS, our CAPS program. It also, it's all the information's on our website, mm -hmm. and they can sign up on Eventbrite. But it's a, it's a great program that introduces them to intense exercises. So if you're not familiar with working out, it, it's a great resource. And we also utilize an interview prep seminar. Um, so once you're actually scheduled for an interview, you will be invited to an interview prep seminar. We just try to really get candidates prepared for the interview process. Yeah. And did you, I mean, I remember, you know, in, in my preparation for the oral interview, for the interview board, which um, if it's, you know, still run the same way and we're able to do it in person, you're sitting there in front of three people and, you know, you're, you're trying to get the job you really, really want. So it can be quite stressful and your mind can play tricks on you. Um, but having that preparation, having recited your answers out loud, tape yourself, listen to it. Don't just think it in your head and be like, oh yeah, I know what to say. Like write them down, manipulate right. it, fine tune it, um, and say it over and over again to help quell the nerves and be like, okay, I, 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 know, I know what I'm gonna say. Um, that to me, that's like, you, you gotta do that. You gotta put that effort in. Right now, because of COVID, we've gone to virtual mm -hmm. um, interviews. Um, our panels are two, one fire personnel person, uh, usually a captain and a civilian HR person from the personnel department. I don't think it's any less stressful doing it <laughs> via the internet and it is being in person. The only thing is, you know, you, you as the candidate are not sweating in front of us and <laughs> trying to wipe your face. Um, the preparation cannot be understated. You know, that interview is 100% how you're going to move forward in this process. Everything else is just, do you have it or you do you don't? Right. Your interview is where you need to shine because that's your one chance to make a first impression on that fire captain that may be working with you one day. Right. And so um, for people that aren't familiar with kind of our interview process, kind of just give a, a quick glimpse into like what the scoring is like and how quickly from anything under 100, you're, you're pretty much done. The, the interview is 100% of your score. Right. So we don't take the written score into account into your total score. That's it's, just pass fail. Correct. It's all based on the interview. So if you come in, like you said, prepared, it's your story, right? It's your life, it's your story. So depending on the questions you're asked, it's how you bring your story out, how you relate it to the job of a firefighter. Right. If you don't say it, we mm -hmm. don't know that you did it. We don't know that you know it. So it's really important, you know, candidates do prepare for that interview because you score that 100, you know you're going, right. you're going somewhere. And because it's such a, a competitive process, you know, we'll get calls, well, I got a 90. I'm like, sorry, but... 90, you know, will, 90 would move you forward. So 70 is, 70 is passing. Right. 70 will not move you to right. the back. Right. <laughs> and and you, you have to understand that I, I kind of talk about as us, we're a volume dealer. We, we put a lot of people through the process. And so if you are that candidate that gets the, the 80 or 85, based on the other people that are gonna do well and get 90 or above, you probably won't get selected for a background. Right. And you know, one of the other things that's really important is she talked about the CAP program. The CAP program has also incorporated some of the tools and equipment that we use. So for those people who have no background in the fire department, going to that CAP training program, even ahead of your interview, is gonna give you some relatable material to talk about during your interview. Right. It's, it, it's highly beneficial, mm -hmm. yeah. highly right. beneficial. Yeah, this is the this is the kind of career that you have to put the work in, and that 
is the application process as well. To be competitive, you got to put the work in. Right. You're not, it's not going to get handed to you. No. <laughs> no. All right. Definitely not. No. Um, is there any last, uh, last words of wisdom you'd like to pass on to anyone looking to apply? We'll start with Captain Redlaw. Yeah, I would just like to remind everyone, it's, we always like to say it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. You have to be driven, uh, disciplined, and patient. You know, that's, it's, it's going to take time, but if you really want it, it's worth it. Yeah. Chief? I would say you're, you're getting into the civil service world, and there's just a different process that goes with the hiring. So we do this stratified random sample to randomly draw names for your interview. So you, you might be lucky and be the first group of names drawn, or you may have to wait almost a year, maybe a year and a half to get your name drawn. Do what you need to do to make yourself successful and position yourself for success by taking advantage of the other things. Working out, get your EMT, get the CPAT, and just know that, like Captain Rudloff said, it, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And the reward is absolutely worth it. Best, best job in the world, best, <laughs> best career ever. ever. Yeah. Third, I third that. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, we hope that this session is helpful to you. A lot of information, but if you missed any of it, if you forget, if you want to make sure, it's all available on joinlafd.org. Look at the frequently asked question, the FAQ. All of the information is there. So please take a look, and we wish you luck in your journey.